Hi and welcome. So we have a new version available of Infection Solver. The main thing is that we released a commercial version uh, that is available for $50 and a studio version that is available for $200. And we still of course have the limited commercial that is free and will be free forever and will be can continue to be updated. So yeah, you can just continue as you did, but if you feel like you want the commercial version and you have a revenue that's high enough that you need it, uh, we thought that maybe you could pay us $50. That felt nice. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, but let's look at what we have added so far. So I'm just going to drop down a Geo node. And the first thing we have that you might notice is that uh, we have uh, added some small thumbnails. And we also updated the configure node. So if you just do configure uh, an infection configure base, which is like gives you a base kind of thing. So you just get a wire grid and you get some scatter and nothing more kind of. So we have something like this just set up for us. And we can then do just a wrangle to say that some particles has density. It's just gonna uh, do like this and say that they have a density of one just to get started. Equal to one, cool. So first thing you notice in here is that if we put down like an infection grow, you see that we have these small thumbnails for every node. So infection eyes, you can see. You can also see if we write here, we can see that we have different kind of, yeah. Hopefully you can see what it is at some degree. So that's very nice. And what we also added, you can keep the ice growth here because I want to show you that. What we also added is this nice help buttons. So if you click this one, you will get uh, the Wikipedia page, which shows you small GIFs and different settings, etc., etc. And this is these are quite nice to just look at. I actually used them myself. So just bring up this, and you see ice growth here, and it explains everything to you. And I strongly recommend you looking at these things. We have all, if you just look at the microservice here, you can see that we have all microservice listed here. So that's kind of nice. And we also have some like uh, details on different workflows, like tag and animation, how you set that up and things like that. So that, that re could really help you get going. So that's one nice thing. Uh, Another thing we added is uh, a very minor thing, but when we use noise on nodes now, you have an attribute here called noise name, which defaults just take the operator string. And what you could do afterwards, if you use this noise, for example, and we play this and we get very little, so we're just gonna add to 25 there or something, add it a bit more and you can see noise. And you see, okay, it's kind of fine detail noise. So if we just go back then and drop down a color node or visualize or whatever you want to do, you can just do run from attribute. And what you see here is you will find this stop infection grow noise. And you can see how the noise looks. Uh, maybe not random from attribute, but rather run from attribute. So you can see here, okay, that's the noise. So we go in and tweak it. We say that, okay, that looks very high frequency. If you just bring the frequency down to like two, and we play a little bit and we go back here and we can see, okay, this is maybe a noise that tweaks the growth a little bit better. So that's a minor thing, but quite nice. Um, we also, yeah, we have all these kind of configurations that has been updated. Uh, so we can do configure animation, we can do configure direction diffusion, for example, whatever you want to do, just get started. So that looks a bit weird, but yeah you will get the point. So you can drop it down, you can get the direction of fusion. And then of course you can change what the EO comes in there, of course. So these are just similar to like the fire pyro setups that you just have a good starting point. <coughs> so that's quite nice, uh, I think at least. So yeah, what else do we have? We, yeah, we have a few of these. We can see configure here. Infection configure, so we have animation, ice growth, uh, emit from geo, reaction diffusion, which should probably be enough to at least understand what's going on. Um, so that's nice. We also updated all our uh, example files, and I think I'm going to open them because we have 
the two major updates we've done is to the UV export as well as the copy workflow. So I'm just going to open up those to show you. Uh, I can show you how that looks. So what we have here is nothing at the moment. Uh, but what you get is these kind of things that explains a little bit what's going on. So what we have here is just an infection initialize thing. And we have that to the subsolver. And then up here we have this sphere going around. And what it does is that it, on the solver, we just have an emit from Geo and we have a ray down. So it just infects whatever's below it. And then we just have a tag in here and a grow. So that's nice. You get something like this. Quite basic, but yeah, you get the point. And what we can do now is we can use uh, our new, uh, we, it's not new, but we updated this tool. So first of all, we want to animate the P scale. So you see here, we get an animation on the P scale. So what we have done here is we used a tag that we created and we just use P scale. And then we can set the animation length to whatever we want, etc. And we can set a randomness of whatever we want as well. So yeah, but we keep it as it was. Uh, so what we do after that is we also add an animation attribute. So this is the same node. But instead of uh, p-scale, we have animation attribute normalized here. You can do it whatever you want, but I recommend using normalized most often. And then we also build an orientation attribute, which we can remove for now. We can skip it so we can see what it does later on. And then we split it up and we merge. So we just keep, see we only have 2,000 points now before we had 100,000. So now we just have these points. But since these are done with ID, it's fine that we don't have a constant point count. So what we can do then is we can do a little animation. So I just have a box here and have a band. And that band is kind of dependent on these motion effects. But I mean, it's just to get a little wiggle on it. And if we then were to cache this as an Alembic, just doing save 48 frames of Alembic and reload it. So we have it loaded here. And I just make it bigger because I want it bigger. Uh, what you can do now is we can use the animation copy. And instead of copy to points, we use Alembic here. And what we can do now is, okay, they're kind of off because we don't have the orientation attribute. I used to have that. So let's go back and say uh, build animation, build orientation attribute here. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, settings, build orientation attribute. So we have them correctly oriented. Uh, so now we get these, so we had a P scale that just animates the scale of them, but then we also use the Alembic animation to uh, give them secondary animation, so to speak. And then of course we can rotate these around Y, similar as you can do with, you know, everything. So you can just get random to them if you want to. <coughs> so that's nice. And the reason why it doesn't, if I remove the orientation attribute, it uses normal and the normal is off compared to an orient. So yeah, that's why it lays flat on the ground. So that's nice. The only thing we have to think about here is the input animation. But the cool thing with this is we set the input animation here, but we can still up here say that we want an animation that is whatever length we want. So we can bring this down to 20 and it animates really fast. You hardly see it. It's just super small when it animates. Or we can bring it up to 200 and it's really slow. Yeah, but I think like 80 was good maybe. So we get this. And of course, you could also change the p-scale animation. So that takes longer. So it takes really long time for it to animate. So it's kind of continuous growth. So you get a little bit more control of this. And of course, this can also be tweaked. And the same goes for this, which is really nice. So we use normalized attributes, and then it's scaled with the animation length. So I think this is a really good update for, I mean, this is a very common task. You want to do stuff, and you want to and this can actually be used on things that don't use this uh, infection solver. I use this for other things as well because it's a very convenient workflow. So that's really nice. We also have some updates to the UV. So I'm just going to open that example file. Uh, so we have infection UV set up here. Let's go discard this. And what we've done there is we've done two things. Uh, so the example file here, you get like a decent resolution version and a lower low resolution with dithering. So what we have here is 
a very basic setup again. So we just have a grow solver and we just cache this out as a UV map. So what we do is we just plug this in and we plug in the UV, uh, the, the grid it's supposed to be on. And now we actually use UV from the points. So you need to keep the UVs here as well, but that's not really a problem if you scatter or do whatever you want. So, but what we have here now is, yeah, you get this very basic thing. You see it as a volume here, but you can of course go to composite view. Oh, you can't go to composite view like that. You have to go like this. And now we've got to composite view. You see what you actually composite. And if you double click on this, you dive into the grow thing, which is nice as well. So you can, in here, you can also add comps if you want to. Uh, so I can just blur this as well if I want to. Uh, and we also change, so you set the resolution here. So you set a fixed resolution of 1K here or 2K or whatever. And then when you're done, you can just uh, render frame range. But what we also added is if we have a more low res version of this sim, so we have scattered a few points, not that many, and we do yeah, get a kind of broad kind of thing here. And what you get from the start uh, might be a little bit, you know, like this. We kind of lack points, etc. And if we go to composite view, update, you see that we have a little bit of problems with it. You can, of course, op uh, add p-scale and stuff to it, but a better option might be to do dithering. So you just scatter new points around the points and jitter them. So that could actually help in many cases. And then, of course, you can dive in here and do stuff as well. Now I have a blur and a sharpen on as well. Might not be needed, but yeah, there they are. You know. So so you can dive in, you can do these kind of things. And we also added a little bit of... Uh, can also scale the p scale by uv distortion so if you have a distorted uv you can get bigger p scale where the uv is more distorted and less where it's more dense so that's kind of convenient as well and as you can see we get a decent kind of map from this extremely low res thing and with a little bit of tweaks in cops you could like edge blur you can do stuff that will make it look even better i think um so that's quite convenient um, and I think that's pretty much it. No, I'm going to show you one more thing. So if we just open uh, this flip interaction thing, example file. Uh, so what we added to the solver is, if you just took down the infection soft solver, you can see it here as well. But in most cases, uh, under advanced, we have recollate near points and we have bypass velocity advection. So what that does is that the recalcul recalculate near points just recalculate the near points, basically. So it checks every frame what point is near, etc. And bypass velocity advection just says that the, the density should not move with velocity. And the reason for that is uh, if you do that, it's easier. Like if you have a flip or something that moves, you don't want the density to move with it, you just want it to be kept at the particles. So I'm gonna show you that. So what we have here is, I'm just gonna remove it now, is we have this, uh, it's gonna do so we don't see other objects here. So we have a very low res uh, field here, which has been initialized as well. And then we have uh, this kind of dude uh, going down, cool. So what we do then is that within the dot net, we have to do a multi-solver instead, and we do a flip solver, we have a flip object, and we also plug in the infection solver core with some microsolvers. So what's important here is that we under advanced have real calculate near points and bypass velocity evection. So if we just start off with removing them and see what happens, see we have this. Uh, you can see, okay, it works, maybe, but no, what's going on there, what's going on there, it's just crazy. Because it's not a constant point. It The point could change order. Uh, things happen. Uh, the near points won't be correctly, etc. So, but if we just click those two in and see what's going on, it would be a little bit slower because it has to recalculate. But what we see here now is that we actually get this kind of nice interaction. So we have a reaction diffusion. This is, we have weird things going on here. But it kind of works. Uh, it definitely works. So you see here, it kind of gets this reaction diffusion things from the liquid. 
And the reason it's rising is because I also tweaked it. So viscosity is based on density. But as you can see, it works. So this is kind of cool thing as well. And then the static solver works. Uh, the static object works for both, of course, as well. The, the so, so you have these interaction options. And you can do it with flip. You can do it with volume. You can actually, yeah, you can do it with many things. I also tried with height fields. It was kind of weird. But yeah, it works. Definitely pop solvers, of course. Cool. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.